Hello everyone, this is Brent from Enter Your Wealth and I'm so happy that you're here today because I'm talking about my new guide that I've released. Um, well, not just yet, but I'm going to release here very soon on Medium, which is my Krabata's Best Battle Game Compositions. Many Krabata aficionados reached out to me after I published the Ultimate Beginner's Krabata Battle Game Guide. It's a pretty good guide, really highlighting how you can start up on the Krabata Battle Game and explaining some of the mechanics, but also a composition that I think is the best. I made it simple instead of trying to cover everything. And then a bunch of people reached out to me on Twitter, basically asking me why I left certain things out. But after seeing so many questions on Twitter, if you haven't followed me there, you definitely should, and doing more research, I've decided to express my opinion on other noteworthy compositions. In this article, I will be describing scenarios, matchups, and the best comps for each Krabata class. When the Krabata battle game comes out, I'll be collecting analytics of my matchups. I'm going to have an updated article getting a little bit more scientific using those analytics to actually see what the data says. Give me a follow here on Medium to keep up to date with that or subscribe to my YouTube channel, of course. In CBGG, I chose the composition composed of Rune, Prime, and Gem as the premier comp to crush the start of the battle game release. Many wonder why Craboid and Surge were filtered out of selection whilst no one asked about bulk, sunken, or organic. That's kind of sad, but it's true. This article aims to address this and is divided into three parts. Top skills for each class, top comps for each class, and miscellaneous mechanics. Please. Okay. So first part, top skills for each class. This is a list of the top skills, which means pincer abilities and eye abilities. If you don't know what these are, I have left links to the white paper, and you should probably read the other article first if you don't know what these are. There are various side grades shown, especially with eye skills. In these cases, choose the ability that best suits your strategy. We're gonna start off with Prime because it is kind of the most popular class we will be seeing. Prime has the highest attack stat in the game currently. So how they balance this, and this was a little bit more of a subtle detail that I don't know if many people have picked up on yet. We have procs such as the Bitcoin stun, for one turn and the Cardano 30% attack buff. And it's only a 10% chance for all, all these abilities here to actually proc. While if you looked at the runes, it's actually 20% and Craboid's also 20%. They really gave Prime more of a super damage ability rather than having a high proc because you can see it's, it's half as frequently as with Rune and Craboid. As you're gonna see in some of these comps, there are some pretty serious disruption meaning crowd control abilities that possibly end up getting stunlocked. So runes, we have these three side grades, <clears throat> either you're going Krayler, Crombie, or Kragon, all 220%. These, it really doesn't matter which one you get here. I think Kragon's one turn stun is the best of these. If you go Krayler, that's also fine. When you're going runed or Kraboid, you're going for more of a disruption comp, focusing on having these eye abilities proc and honestly one turn stun is really OP. It's really OP. So I'm gonna finally address what everyone's asking, why not Craboid? So Craboid, you can see here, way less damage, 190% compared to runes to 20%. Obviously they have the same basic attack uh, damage because they have the same attack stat. You choose Craboid over rune, only for a better coverage on factional advantage. Really hard to get these um, crabs for Prime, Bruned, and even Craboid, but Craboid is actually much easier to get. Okay, Surge, Ruby, 230%, nothing special there, just the most damage out of them all. You have a lot of options with the 20% HP shield. Someone messaged me also to asking why I don't say Reflect. Yeah, Reflect is good too. Uh, but really, I think Disruption's the best as well. You can see Spikey's glancing, 50% chance to miss for two turns. So you can see we have a 10% chance for these procs, while we have a 20% chance, and I just don't see why you would do that. There's no real inherent benefit to running bulk. I, it was supposed to be more of a bruiser, while the surge was supposed to be more of a tank. They kind of are the same class. They have the same affinities, same weaknesses, you're just having less of a proc chance here. And I really think that if you're running a disruption, you, you really want that 20% chance. That's twice as frequent. No one even talks about Sunken, but Sunken might be a hidden gem here. And 
With this Krell's 240%, its effective ability damage is the same actually as Craboid or Runes. Most people don't know that and Sunken has really good factional advantage versus some of the premier comps. Kind of similar to Craboid. Um, and then we also have this Krell stun for one turn. So what are we trying to do here? This is the only viable one for Sunken. It's a disruption comp you're going to be running with Sunken. We'll go through all of these. Pincer for gem. I've already talked about this one. Roll crate, 35% increased damage. I think the best one is the, par pa <clears throat> the Paraiba. Glancing, 50% chance miss for two turns, 20% chance. Organic may quite possibly be the most OP class in the game. It has two very good pincer abilities, which is the AoE Silence and Kernana's AoE Glancing for two turns on the whole team. This is another thing to mention, Celon's free skip two turns. This is nuts. You're skipping two turns. It's the only eye ability where you're skipping two turns, albeit it's only a 10% chance. But you see in other procs like with Bulk, they have a 10% chance and they don't even have a stun. So in this analysis, all classes will be included except the Bulk class because as I said, it's a budget surge and, redu and redundant compositions. So I defined a new term as glaring advantage, glaring disadvantage, which is when a Krabata team as a whole has a factional advantage slash disadvantage greater than or equal to two. Um, this can be up to three in one, of the, in one of the teams that we see. So glaring advantage is used as a greater factor that a team has advantages slash disadvantages just versus specific classes and will likely have trouble with compositions with those corresponding classes and thus dictate a counter composition. What I'm trying to get at is that you can see this is my spreadsheet where I did a lot of my analysis here and with the glaring advantage for example in this um, first one which is the RPG you see it has a glaring advantage against organic so that means that two of these classes are doing well versus organic and they have a glaring disadvantage versus Craboid and Sunken. It's strong against two classes here. That's all I'm trying to get at uh, because if for some reason someone was running a double Craboid this comp would just absolutely lose right? So prime comps, unsurprisingly the best prime comp position comes straight from CBGG and it's Rune Prime and Gem RPG. As the name implies RPG does the most damage a comp can do, compounding the 240% attack AVAX pincer ability with Gem's Earl Craze guaranteed attack damage boost. Rune is the obvious choice here, covering types against Craboid and Sunken, the glaring disadvantage for these classes. As simple as it gets, hits hard and fast with disruption, stun, glance, or silence options. So with this composition, I've already discussed it many times now, but I will say this. This is gonna do a lot of damage. It's, it has the most damage potential out of any class, um, not factoring in factional advantage. It's glaring weakness is the biggest problem here. We saw that with organic and surge. Um, but it's the the thing about running a gem class is it always has a factional advantage versus a tank. Gems always gonna be doing well, and prime will also be doing well versus that. So it's gonna burn down a tank no matter what it is, unless it's a gem itself. I think it's good to mix and match, have some disruption in there on um, where it matters most, and bank off gems or cray ability to make prime do a lot of damage here. All right, rune comp. So this is actually the most interesting comp. You may be surprised to hear this, but perhaps RPG isn't the greatest comp for runed. Runed, Craboid, and Organic, so RCO. RCO is a disruption composition that has no GA slash D. So there's actually a little bit of um, graph theory here. There's two triangles and three comps. I mean, technically four if you want to count bulk, but I'm not counting bulk, so three. Any one of these triangles will not have a GA or a GD. This one can't be good versus this one and this one. That's just how this graph is made up. So there are three comps that are like that and actually kind of really OP comps. This is RCO actually. RCO is a disruption composition that has no GA, GA slash D. Craboid and Rune IFX proc 20% over the of the time over Prime's 10% proc chance. Since this is a disruption comp, the stun is used for both C and R. 
coupled with organic's natural affinity for disruption, either glancing the whole team or silencing the whole team, makes this the most annoying composition you'll ever encounter. Really, this is just trying to make it so your team, your enemy team doesn't have a chance to even attack. So if you're stunning people over and over, they're still generating, they're still generating energy, okay? They may come out with a full bar. If you use organic silencing ability with that, they may come out of it just auto attacking, even though they have a full bar. That's why this comp could be so devastating. And it's also a really fast comp. It speed ties with RPG, the one above it. What that means is you might be getting the stun lock right off the bat. That can be kind of nasty. The only issue is a matter of scarcity. The right organic will be the hardest crap to find or most ex expensive. You're gonna be paying that premium. If you happen to snipe this rare crab, you probably should make this composition. I would say this is probably the best comp and has the most variability and really just stupid annoying. This is like the most expensive comp to probably find. These rune eye effects, you're not even finding these. We'll just see if we can even find a single one of these crabs just to demonstrate how hard it may be to find this. and. You know, I guess you could go with a ruined, a ruined or a craboid with the damage buff in, 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 as like a kind of side grade, but I really don't think you should do that because if you're gonna run something like that, you might as well run it with the prime. Um, prime just does more damage. All right, let's start off with organic. So, really, we're looking for Kanana. Like, there's no way we're finding this right now, but it'd be funny if we could. So, Kanana or and I, i'm only looking at the pincers right now but you need the krell eye as well for that stun which is probably pretty important but honestly you're really looking for the pincer abilities because these are so rare so we're, we're already at twenty four thousand tus okay five hundred dollars already for these crabs this is already expensive for uh, Krabata currently because if Krabata ends up popping off here in a second these are gonna go up in price like insane amounts so if you are gonna pay the premium it's probably right now so here's one here's a Kranana Kranana claws here but it doesn't even have the right eyes but as I said before the ideal one you would want is the silence and Krell because that way you you have even one more stun so here is the silence one Right here, $802, not even the right eyes. So you can see this is such a hard crab to find. I, even when it doesn't come down to the perfect crab, I think just in general, organic is the most rare. So you're not gonna encounter many of these is my main point. And I already just showed you how hard that is to find. Let's go even just for these runes. RCO, this is probably the best comp. Are you gonna find it though? Are you gonna play against it? Probably not. A class that is the true underdog might just possibly be the best counter comp of the emergence of the battle game. So Prime, Sunken, and Surge, AKA PS2 is much much like RCO, it's a disruption comp that differs in being bulkier and much more damaging version of the comp. I expect PS2 to punish many Prime Craboid users that will show up in the battle game's release. In this composition, you're running stun on both your Prime and Sunken with glancing on your search. This comp is slow, so expect to go second. This is kind of the other version of PS2, except you're using three tanks. So this is gonna be a two front line, one back. You're gonna have your Prime in the back here with the Sunken and your Surge up front. Why is this comp even useful at all? Is because it it is a disruption comp with much less cost. Um, and then if Crabboys are really a big deal and Primes are a really big deal, um, this comp will really end it. All right, and then this is kind of the last address of some of the other comps that I may see. There are a plethora of comps that may emerge on top of this afore, on top of the aforementioned double class, so two of the same class comps is an obvious one. My best guess is a two rune gem comp showing only GDs versus tanks, which may never reach them. In a lot of ways, I think rune is the best DPS class. This does the most damage, which a lot of people will love, but if you think about it, if you have a rune with the stun, oh my gosh, this thing in the battle game is showed it's stun locking some class and just destroying it. So, I mean, that's the power of stun. I don't know if they're going to rebalance it or not, but having a rune with that Kragon stun is pretty much the best thing. If you're looking to snipe, 
this is probably the best one to snipe for. Um, hard to see poor balancing of bulk as I see it's a budget surge. I mentioned that before, I don't know what they're going to do with it. It's really pointless of a, a class. The best gem and organic comps were mentioned above, but there may be more uses in a frontline oriented fashion. So most of the, most of the compositions that I talked about before, uh, with I think two exceptions, are a two DPS, one tank frontline, but there may be that two tank, a one DPS um, composition that may emerge more so. But I do have a few in there that I think are kind of the best, so I don't see why you'd run anything else. But maybe you'd run some type of organic mix with another tank. One is the same idea is that organics are just too rare. Um, so I really think this is a pretty accurate depiction of what you might see mostly. And this is just my link tree if you want to follow me anywhere else. Thank you for reading and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to me here on Medium, follow me on Twitter and YouTube. Also, if you're interested in the latest trends, we have a GameFi NFT Discord community. I'm not going to leave this in the description, but it will be in this Medium article if you do want to join. I have closed it out actually, so this is private. You're either in or you're getting in because you came to this Medium article and you followed me here on Medium and <laughs> liked my content. As always, do your own research. This is not financial advice. Good luck sniping crabs. There's some good ones to be sniping here and they will definitely flip for a lot. Uh, that's what I'll be doing. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.